Rain is so very sorry. Right after getting to the rental shop, Raina bows apologetically. She's solemn, that's all I can say. A clumsy but sincere bow. Don't worry about it. Considering your functional limits, I know it couldn't be helped. The customization increased outputs but decreased stability, and she naps from time to time because of that. In other words, these things are loads forced upon Raina. But if Zetetsu-san and Hachoku-san weren't there, Raina would have... But we were there, and we managed to minimize the accidents. Plus, it might not have happened if we weren't there anyway. No way! Way? It's possible. After all, I was one who pushed Nagi to put more effort into her training. She's not convinced. However, Reyna most likely understands that denying my claim will cause the blame to shift to Nagi. You can think of it this way. If this accident didn't happen, a bigger one could have happened in the future. Oh! Repeated nods, Reyna nods again and again. After that, there was an emergency track inspection that revealed well over 2,000 issues. We've experienced an accident that we can take as a warning. This is something we should consider to be fortunate. I believe what you said is correct, Sotetsu-sama. Hachiraku agrees with me, albeit a little stiffly. If an accident were to occur after tourism comes into full force, the damages and effects may prove fatal. She nods again. Reina is nodding like she never has before. Hunt has an ambiguous expression on her face, but still nods slightly. Hibiki stays motionless, continuing to frown. We are still in the stages where mistakes are allowed. We can simply fix what's wrong, if you feel responsible for it, then take responsibility by fixing it. Okay, Sutetsu-san. Hachiroku-san, Reina understands. A cheerful response. Raina seems to have decided to be more optimistic about things. But Paulette? She appears to still have something on her mind. She sluggishly takes out some documents from her bag. This is for the maintenance, and this is the estimate for the minimum amount. Her hand and voice seem weak. I briskly respond to try not to follow her negativity. Thank you for getting that out in such a short time. I look at the A4 size documents containing the estimates. I'm first overwhelmed by the amount of things that require repair. The main line, side tracks, cross ties, and blasts are a given. There are countless others though, such as obstacle removal and various kinds of maintenance work. Huh. What is this? Construction of Yanoi Station Triangular Junction? Um, you know how Kia 07 has a driver's stand on both sides, right? Yes. From the side, Kia 07 looks symmetrical. The left and right sides both end in driver's stands. Perhaps explaining what she likes drew some strength back into Pod's voice. That's why it can easily change directions even without any special facilities. That's right. There's the automatic brake valve and the independent brake valve. You can simply remove those and walk it. You could just walk to whichever driver's stand and go in that direction. If Pilot and Raina move, where they go is the front. On the other hand, Hadroku ha only has one driver's stand. In other words, there is a distinct front and back to 8620. That's true. 8620 has a front and back, while Q07 has two front sides. Hatraku and Paulette nod almost at the same time. 8620 is able to run backward, however it makes visibility a problem, and it's simply more dangerous. I see. So that's why Ohotoyo Station has a turntable? 
I saw that gigantic road ta round turning table on the tracks at the display event. Placing gate 620 on that and spinning it around will allow it to turn to anywhere it wants to at it wants as the front. On the other hand, 8620 was able to go between Otoyo and Inoue because of the turntable. Hmm. She said there was a turntable, but the one at Otoyo Station should still be there. So you mean that there used to be a turntable at Inoue, but it's gone now? Yes, uh, inserting a turntable would be a huge cost. And one that I haven't even been able to get an estimate for. Understood. So you're saying that this triangular junction would be a suitable, would be a substitute for the turntable. That's correct, Sudetsu-sama. After saying that, Hachiroko begins drawing a simplified diagram. The train that moves in the direction of the arrow must first go past the base of the triangle. On the next diagram. After that, you move backwards along the left hypotenuse and continue on until you go past the apex of the triangle. Another diagram. You go, return, and I see. So by doing that, you can return to the original tracks on the right side with the train flipped. Yes, that's how it works. Looking at the last diagram, I can see that my understanding is correct. I see. So by adding two more pairs of tracks to the original line, you can flip the direction of 8620. That's the gist of it. Uh, however, some extension work would be required on the original tracks. Paula answers right away, but her voice isn't as articulate as previously. The area around Inoue Station is the company property of Ohitoyo Railway, so the turntable would cost significantly less. Even if we managed to lower the cost of the triangular junction, the total amount would still be this much. Seeing the numbers punched out, I completely understand why Paula sounds depressed. This amount is much higher than what I had expected. Oh, but you don't have to gather the entire amount here. Hmm? I hear that Ohotoyo Railway is always in the red. Are you able to get subsidies from the city? That's only if it goes through the assembly and is slipped into the provisional budget. The commonality of railways is high, but even so, it's difficult. I'm thinking of bringing it up at the assembly, too, even if they doubt me for bringing it up for personal reasons. Yes, I suppose. A sigh of relief. I begin to realize the range and weight of the burden that Paulette is constantly subjected to. But I still don't understand why I don't have to pay the entire amount. It's a sort fee that Makara-san kept paying for years. Oh, that's right! McCartney said that she's been paying the city for years and years. Yes, ever since the Imperial Railway dissolved, money's been held by the city as an unknown payee. But the current owner of the storage is Ohotoyo Railway, and they've been acknowledged as the proper recipient for the money. That's right. Ever since we've incorporated, we have the right to the money without a deadline. Some energy returns to Paulette's voice. No, it's most likely her inserting some tension as a sort of resolve. It was a miracle that only one person was slightly injured, and we received no complaints, but that accident never should have happened. Everyone agrees in silence, and no one who denies that has no right to be a part of the railways. And because of that, the Otoyo Railway Company has every intention to pay all costs associated with the track movements. Storage fees accumulated until today will be directly used for the costs of track maintenance. 
but even that's far from enough to pay for all the maintenance needed. So, it's about 400 million. 400 million? Hachaku's expression slowly clouds up. With her helping at the rail shop and the brewery, and participating in the display event, it seems she understands the current value of money. It's difficult about to come up with. Nodding to Hatricker's words, Paula turned her eyes to me. At that amount, we will have to borrow it. We'll put up some facilities of Otoyo Railway as collateral. I'm against that. The bank is for the aircraft factory. You can't let them hold on to the lifeline of the Otoyo Railway. But Kasaki... Senpai won't force you to do impossible things by taking advantage of the loan. Determined voices echo throughout the place. I feel Hibiki's innocent cries. If you say so. I'm sure Kisaki, the individual, is like that. But the bank as an organization is a different story. In quick contrast to her earlier cry, Hibiki goes silent in a sullen way. She must have known this topic would come up. But she stays in her seat, nevertheless, to listen to us. I have no intention of letting that sincerity go to waste. But there isn't anything besides the Otoyo Railway's assets to be put up as collateral. There is my aircraft. Nini! What? I've already got Navi's approval. It believes in me. It says it'll be collateral willingly. Um, but that's... It's all to your railway that left the tracks in bad shape. Why do you have to do this, Nini? Out of anger, Hibiki stands up to object. Even though it works against her, Paula is nodding in agreement with Hibiki. Hibiki, I thought you hated Navi. Of course I don't like it. Thinks you're... it's your guardian, Nini? But this is entirely different. I see. As her brother, I'm proud to see she's grown up to be kind and fair. But Tabiki, Navi is... It hasn't forgotten why I've come back here. You mean to oppose build the building of the aircraft factory? No. The reason I'm back is to protect Ohatoyo. My second home. And its water resources and environments. If Taito-san didn't adopt me, I wouldn't have grown up in this town. If I hadn't come here and met these kind people, my endless hatred would have consumed me. Navi understands that full well. And thus, it agreed to be the collateral in order to protect me. How does that lead to protecting you, Satetsu-san? An unexpected question from Reina. No one wanted to say it, even if they wanted to know. Todd and Tabiki follow suit by nodding. Granted, if the factory building is forced through and the Kuma River is polluted as a result, even if the town of Oatoyo is ruined, it's not going to kill me. Raina nods in agreement. But Navi has been with me ever since I was in a bad state for protecting me. I'm sure of it, I can swear by it even. In a way, this machine, this AI, knows me better than anyone else. My life is not just... is not simply just my life. It's everything that makes up who I am. The Navi is... Nini, you know, Nissan. If the anti-aircraft factory movement fails... It will mean that I won't be myself that Navi recognizes anymore. I know that's nothing but a groundless fear. I purposely force out a laugh. Hey, Bicky, you know exactly how worrisome and overprotective it is. I try to make her laugh, but Hibiki just looks meek. Yeah, I know, I know. I know exactly how long Navi has watched you, Nissan. Hibiki goes silent. Pod's voice interrupts the silence. But, um, getting back to the topic... Just as Hibiki san said, this is a problem of Ohatoyo Railway. At the same time, this is our problem. 
regardless. Which is why I'm suggesting this compromise. A compromise? Our talks are out of order. I should have mentioned it in the beginning so that we didn't have to talk about extraneous stuff. I'll borrow 400 million from Kasaki with Navi as collateral. I'll lend that money to Ahatoyo Railway under the same terms. Oh. We'll do our individual transactions that way. That way, Ahatoyo Railway can, man can maintain its independence. Well, that doesn't agree very quickly to my proposal. But, um... The color of worry begins to overtake her expression. If you get behind on your payments, I'll come to collect. Even though I stand in the middle, your responsibilities don't change, Pollux. <gasps> oh, that's right. Worst case scenario, I can apply for a loan with Ohio Railway's collateral. That's right. Your funds will then be used to pay back the loan to me, and then to the bank. Knowing that the responsibility still lies with her, Paulette feels relieved. Naturally, I won't let you get behind on your payments. Everything will go as planned, and no one will suffer a loss. Yes, uh, that was my intention from the beginning. Raina will work hard, too. I will always be by your side, Sutetsu-sama. Voices of agreement, one after another. After a moment or two, I hear a slightly sulking voice. Just do whatever you want, Nini. The property of a Hotoyo is everyone's wish. Or prosperity of a Hotoyo is everyone's wish. Then we'll go with this plan. We'll obtain a loan without being told what to do. If the bank will get interest income, all that's left is for us to come to terms with them. Paulette, do you deal with the bank? Of course. Though there's nothing special about that. It's alright with you, Nini. I can talk directly with Kisaki Senpai. Her statements are decisive, but I can hear sulking in her voice. Her cheeks are puffed and blushed in annoyance. Even so, when I ask her to, Hibiki takes out her cell phone and begins calling. This is the quickest way. Alright, off to the bank then, I guess. Fun. Hmm. I drink the coffee, the receptionist brought me. As the office of Hosho Kis Kisaki, the... Kumamoto Bank, Ohatoyo Branch's bank manager, the space is large and brightly lit from the sun. Did she set things up like this for her clients, or is the whole decor just her personal style? A triangular center table and high decorative lights above the sideboard is an old statue of Daikoku. It feels like a hodgepodge of styles, but in a way, it's fitting for a bank. Excuse me? It isn't the voice of the receptionist from earlier, nor is it the voice of Hosho Kisaki. I have trouble judging whether it's the voice of a man or a woman. We apologize for making you wait despite having appointments. A thin figure in a suit and glasses. I've seen this person from somewhere. That's right, it was the day of the display show. It's the man who was with Hosho Kisaki. Not at all. I'm very thankful that I was provided with the appointment so quickly. Hosho is looking forward to this meeting, but there is an emergency. Branch manager's meeting she is attending. Oh, should I reschedule? No, I was told to speak with you as her representative. In a smooth, rehearsed motion, the man holds out his business card. I'm Hosho's secretary, and my name is Arakami. Thank you for the cover. I take his card with both hands and look at it. Arakami Kazuki. Kazuki as in fragrant moon. Hmm. Hold on. Arakami. You appear to be affiliated with the Aerocraft Tech Company? Aerocraft Tech Company, Far East Branch On-Site Senior Manager. 
That's what it says in the corner of his business card. Yes, I was dispatched from Aerocraft Company to work as Hoshio Kasaki's secretary. I see. In other words, he's on the side of the Aero Company to promote building of the factory. And if he's someone that's not from RTO, he'll be more difficult to negotiate with than Kasaki. I apologize for my late introduction. I am from the Megita Number no. One Brewery. My name is Megita Sotetsu. I only have my adoptive father's wholesaler business card. I hold out the card and wait for him to take it while I search for the right words. Today, I am not here to speak with you as a liquor wholesaler, but as a line maintenance department chief of the Otoyo Railway. I was unaware that Ahatoya Railway had a line maintenance department. Is it related to the accident from earlier? Word gets out fast. Uh, that should move things along, actually. Yes, currently Ahatoya Railway's line maintenance structure is, to be honest, insufficient. I see. In order to provide a better service to the citizens, we believe that reinforcing and making the lines more secure is a necessity. Since there are sections in OTO where aircraft cannot be used, we believe that the railway has high public utility. Murakami speaks without emotion. As long as I don't know his intentions, there's no point in trying to play tricks. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thus, I've come to request a loan to partially fund the maintenance of the tracks. I've heard about the general outline from the whole show. I've also looked at the materials beforehand. Rakami takes off his glasses and fastidiously wipes them before putting them back on. Regarding the flight aircraft that belongs to you, the value of it is more along the lines of 200 million. Uh, Navi? Is it because the air crew navigation system requires exchanging parts? That's correct. Exchanging parts on flight navigation systems requires a state of the art technology and costs appropriately. A short response because I know the reason. It's true that the majority of the cost of flight aircraft lies in the aircraft navigation system. I still think that the machine itself holds quite a lot of value. That's true, however, its model is many years old. Moreover, its total flight mileage is very high. Ah. That's right. Navi flies on its own almost non-stop. That's not exactly the most common way of using aircraft. I find that to be fair, if that's the case. So, theoretically, if you did loan the 200 million, what would the interest on that be? I'm sorry, Makita san, for making you wait. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, I just appreciate you taking the time, especially considering your schedule. It's Osho Kazaki. It seems like our meeting is over, or perhaps she was just looking for the right time to enter the conversation. How much have you and Urakami gone over? We've discussed that the upper limit of the loan is 200 million, and... <clears throat> what are you acting all polite for? It's not like you two don't know each other. Huh? It's an old man. Some old man just walked right into the branch manager's office. Uh, for presents? I'd appreciate it if you didn't interfere in my work. For presidents? I'm surprised. So this old man is Hosho Mototata. Now that you mention it, his dress is crisp and his attitude calm. Come, branch manager. You shouldn't be rude to the president. It was the president himself who said there's no need to be polite among acquaintances. That's right. <laughs> you got me there. He smacks his forehead with a laugh. 
You can't really ascertain a person's character by their position, but this president is way too candid. Let's be straight shooters about this, said Tetsuku. You do that too. But yes, but... Straight shooter. You know what that means, right? Ah, I'm not sure what to do. Speaking in a way that's anything but applied to someone above me feels totally foreign. You may say that, but we don't know each other. Kasaki, or Kasaki san, and I are. It's the feeling of when I spoke to father when I was a kid. I try to evoke that feeling in shooting straight. Oh, so you don't remember, said Tetsuku. When you were adopted, I did meet you a few times. When I was adopted? He's right, I don't remember having ever met him before. I guess I'm not surprised. Back then I was too consumed with hate and envy to notice anything. Of course I never talked about those feelings, so all I did was hide in my shell. I suppose it's only natural you don't remember. I honestly thought you were done for at the time. He knows of my circumstances and we've met before. He hints at it, but behind that cheerful voice, it feels as if he's exposing my circumstances. Then, President, oh, but Taito-san, do you know Taito-san? I have met Taito-san as well. Kenzo and I were classmates. Ah, so you knew my father. I feel bond unexpectedly. Meaning, Saki-san and Tabiki also knew each other when they were kids? You can just call me Kazaki. I'll also call you Satetsu. She may speak bluntly, but there's also a note of rejection in her voice. We've known each other for a while. Not going back to childhood or anything like that. Just cool. As she says that, Kazaki frowns a little. But you know what, Satetsu? You and I have met three times when we were kids. She doesn't sound like she's happy that we've met before. All three times you never said a word to me. You never forget those kinds of things. Especially not something like that. Although, it was in the past. Sorry I did that. It's alright, I looked into it myself. You were the victim of a large railway accident. Yes. Although she's not happy for our reunification, Saki's words feel sentimental. Because she doesn't seem to hold back, I don't need to either. So this is what I concluded. When a scar runs so deep, a person can die even while they're still alive. I agree. I nod and am genuinely surpri surprised. Even back then, when Hoshi Kasaki was much younger, she understood how people worked. That's when I completely lost interest in you. That's why I'm very surprised right now. Her unwavering eyes fixed on me. I get the impression that she came closer without physically being near me. I have a knack for figuring people out, but Satetsu? I didn't realize it was you at the Akaya as so shrine. A soft smile comes naturally to Kasaki's face. Could it be because I've heard all about you from Hibiki already? I never would have known that the emotionless boy was Hibiki's brother. Does that mean Hibiki was complimenting me? It makes me happy, which can be heard in my voice. I've matured somewhat since then, or rather they helped me mature. What do you mean? Well, I tell them everything without holding back, the various people I met in Oto helped me grow up. That's why I want Oto, its water and people to stay the way it is. I was born in Ohio, so I understand your arguments. And because I understand, I will approve the loan. Thank you. So that you understand, it's impossible to loan more than 200 million. Urakami's inspection of air correlated matters is accurate. Urakami bows as if to thank her for the compliment. A small doubt rises when I see his unchanging attitude. Rokami-san, you were dispatched here to build the aircraft factory in Ohio, right? 
Uh, incorrect. Uh, Makita san, my job is to build aircraft factories in suitable locations. Urakami must be trying to somewhat follow the president's order of being a straight shooter. His thin fingers move his necktie sideways as he tightens it slightly. A factory that can stably and efficiently run for the long term cannot be built easily. I'm here to investigate that. So your job is to decide whether or not this is a suitable place. Correct. If I make the judgment that this place is unsuitable, then withdrawing is also within my discretion. I see. Ohio has been recommended as a high priority candidate from a local coordinator. Rukami peers at me through his glasses. To be honest, I find your activities extremely helpful in making that final call. If they didn't approve the loan, I could easily push the anti factor movement into a corner. The answer Rukami gives me completely erases my doubts. I'm convinced now. Thank you so much for the direct answer. Not at all. <laughs> Looks like you've come to terms with each other. After being told that, I realized something. My sense of caution I had when I first got here is gone. If this is the result of negotiation skills, then that means I've fallen prey to it. I do have a suggestion. Hoshi Matata goes through the stack of materials I had handed over. Matata grins at me as if he were a lion with its mouth open. How about you add one more collateral? If you do, I'll loan you the full 400 million at the minimum interest rate. Oh. That sounds compelling. Ningi, you put yourself up as collateral? Okay, that sounds slightly less appealing. She interrogated it out of me, and I should have just called her on the cell from my room. I'm sorry, father. I'll call you again. I hang up the phone and hear, and then hear some floppy footsteps heading in my direction. What's going on, Hee-chan? Why are you shouting? Nini, Nisa, Nini said he's going to be collateral for a loan or something. Huh? McCurney is here too, and she sits down. This is going to turn into a family meeting. There's no way I can escape this. Well, well, Nini, Nini! What do you mean you put yourself up as collateral? Don't blow it out of proportion. We're not talking about human trafficking here. Well, of course. I try to explain as much as I can to the raging Hibiki, but then McCurney asks me a question with a big smile. Then so, Jim, how are you going to be exchanged for money if you if you are the collateral? Oh, well, hearing exchange for money makes me realize something. In simple terms, being collateral means that I have a have disposable value. If the loan payments aren't met, I'll join the Ohatoyo Bank and study how to run a business under Matadasa. Actually, that doesn't sound too bad. Indefinitely? He didn't really mention a time limit. He said he'll pay me a salary as agreed upon. Oh. McCurney's hands, body, and expression remain completely motionless. However, she is still smiling in a way that makes it hard for me to read her emotion. So, how did you answer him, Sochan? Well, I said I couldn't accept that and turned it down. Oh, so you did turn it down. Hibiki lets out a long sigh of relief. McCurney, on the other hand, remains motionless. Why did you turn it down? Well, I think I should have told you about this sooner. I was looking for the right time to say it, but completely lost my chance. I've made a few promises with father as conditions to take time off school and as a liquor wholesaler. What promises? The first is the time limit. 
I have to generate results within two years. Uh huh. If I can facilitate the withdrawal of the factory within that time frame, I was promised that I would end my training, which would allow me to go independent. That's a good deal. Yes, a very generous one, in fact. And... She maintains her smile, continuing on with the questions. What else did you promise the brewer, Zochan? Brewer? She said brewer instead of dad. McCurney's mad. Just knowing that sends chills up my spine. There's one more. If I can't produce any results within the time limit, what happens then? The opposite. My training period continues. On top of that, I'll marry the person of his choosing. Marry? What? Marry? Who? Has he picked someone already? And if so, who is it? I don't know. But I have no intention to fail, so I don't didn't even bother to ask. <sighs> Relief? Disgust? Or disappointment? Hibiki makes those ambiguous sounds as she turns to McCurney pleadingly. But so, Chan, you turned it down, right? Or else you would be taken in as security. Correct. But then why, uh, Matata-san? He just laughed it off and said, I'll talk to Kenzo about it. Talk about what? She exclaims loudly again. Hibiki sure is showing off the spectrum of emotions today. He didn't explain. He just said to rest assured and become collateral. Be one with the collateral. <laughs> What's with that and this old man Matata? No, it's not Matata, it's Mototata. They're, they're treating you like property. Property, I suppose so. I didn't even realize that. It didn't particularly anger me. But seeing Hibiki this angry, and for my sake at that, it makes me worried, seeing as my reaction here is clearly not normal. What did Kisaki chan say? Hmm? Hibiki freezes up. I don't know why she'd bring up Kisaki now of all times, but I respond to her truthfully just the same. Nothing in particular. I don't think she said anything, actually. Uh. Weird sound again, followed by a long sigh and a popping sound that overlaps her cries. Then so, Chan? It's McCurdy. It was the sound of her tapping her lap while kneeling. One more thing. I'm going to give you a choice. She takes out a brush, ink, and writing paper. She prepares everything in a fluid motion and then begins writing something. So, Chen, if you sign here, I'll personally lend you 200 million yen at no interest with no collateral. This offer is much too generous. I choke on my own voice when I remember the incidents revolving around the inheritance of Tatrasan's estate. That would be very helpful, but... But what? No, no. I can't say it. I don't want to... I don't want to trouble you. I've been enough of a headache for as it is. Being in a desperate situation, though, I don't have the luxury of keeping my pride intact. Know what? I can't even ask her why. The act of asking is incredibly insulting to McCurney. But my doubts still remain. I'm only her adopted brother. 200 million isn't exactly chump change, even for McCurney. That's why I'm hesitant. Freezing up, I'm unable to come to a sound judgment. So, Chen. A calm voice caresses me while I stay frozen. Her smile is gone, but it's been replaced by a gentle expression. When I'm in trouble, Sochen, will you help me? An unexpected question. There's not a speck of doubt in my answer, though. McCurney's question is not simple in nature. Without question, I will help you with everything I have. Same goes for me. That's all. Me too! I'll definitely help too! Ah! The tension in my shoulders releases. I finally understand what a fool I've been. 
I was one who was so fixated on the fact that we weren't blood related. McCurney, Hibiki. So naturally, I went to go pick up the brush that wasn't offered to me. I would have to repay everything. I was about to say, but managed to suppress it. Don't get cocky. Be honest with yourself. What's most important now isn't my worry over the money. When I come to that realization, all the excess emotions finally melt away and a single motion remains. A feeling that wells up so big that it searches for a way out, ultimately finding it through my mouth. Thank you. In response to the choice that McCurney gave me, I then signed the paper she inked herself. Megita Setetsu. A lot rides on top of this name. Okay. So I guess we didn't end up going up as collateral. That's good, I guess. Probably. 